Imagine a powerful force that can form entire galaxies, yet remain hidden from view. The phenomenon of light trying to escape and time itself warping. This is the reality of a supermassive black hole lurking at the centers of countless galaxies, including ours. But the story doesn't end there. Recent discoveries have confirmed that these cosmic giants are not just passive consumers of matter. They influence the very structure of the universe, driving the formation of stars, shaping the evolution of galaxies, and even playing a crucial role in the creation of planets like Earth. Today, we delve into the hidden mechanisms behind these forces and explore the revolutionary changes that are finally making these secrets known. What we discover could change our view of the universe forever. So first, let's make sure we're on the same page and discuss a bit of theory. Let's start with quasars, which serve as the energetic hearts of active galaxies in the universe. These luminous beacons powered by supermassive black holes that absorb vast amounts of matter outshine the collective light of all the stars in their host galaxies. In our case, however, a particular subset of quasars known as red quasars have attracted the special attention of astronomers. Unlike their bluer counterparts, red quasars are shrouded in cosmic dust, which plays a key role in their unique characteristics. The redness observed in these quasars is a direct effect of the dust that surrounds them. The dust absorbs shorter blue wavelengths of light and lets in longer red wavelengths. This phenomenon not only changes its appearance, but also enhances radio emission as shown by recent studies using data from the Dark Energy Spectroscopic Instrument, or DESI, and LOFAR, which is a low-frequency array. A study by Victoria Fawcett and her team at Newcastle University has found that red quasars emit stronger radio signals than their dust-free blue counterparts. Intense streams of radiation emanating from the quasar collide with surrounding dust, exciting the molecules inside and causing them to emit radio waves. This interaction is key to understanding why red quasars are more radio loud. But why are these red quasars so important? The answer lies in their age and stage of evolution. Red quasars are thought to represent a younger phase of the life cycle of active galaxies. The dust enveloping them is not just an obstacle, it's a remnant of the galaxy's past, probably formed during a starburst event, a period of intense star formation caused by galaxy mergers or other dramatic interactions. As the supermassive black hole continues to feed, its streams gradually blow away this dusty veil, revealing in its place a blue quasar with a much fainter radio emission. This blowout phase refers to the evolution of a quasar from a dusty radio loud formation to a cleaner, bluer quasar with muted radioactivity. Observing red quasars gives astronomers a glimpse into the early stages of this transformation and provides valuable insights into the mechanisms that govern the evolution of galaxies. The discovery of thousands of red quasars by the Fawcett team underscores their importance in the cosmic landscape. These objects are not just rare anomalies, but crucial pieces of the puzzle in understanding how galaxies evolve. As supermassive black holes grow and evolve, so do their host galaxies, and the activity of quasars plays a central role in this dynamic process. Now that we understand the basics, we can easily continue our journey and delve deeper into the concept of the explosion phase and its impact on the evolution of galaxies. The explosion phase theory provides a deeper look into the life cycle of red quasars at the centers of young active galaxies. 
units believe that this phase represents a critical period in the evolution when the supermassive black hole at the core begins to clear away the dense clouds of gas and dust that obscure it. And that transforms the galaxy from a red quasar to a blue one. This theory is based on the enormous force generated by a supermassive black hole that feeds on the material of its accretion disk. Intense gravitational forces within this disk create friction, heating the gas and dust to millions of degrees. And this progress not only illuminates the quasar, but also results in energy releases that eventually lead to the explosion phase. These streams, consisting of high-speed winds and magnetically collimated jets, act like space brooms, sweeping away surrounding dust and gas. Colliding with matter, these jets generate shock waves that further accelerate the cleaning process. Over time, this cleaning reveals the quasar's interior, reducing the dust content and allowing the quasar to shine more brightly in the optical and ultraviolet wavelengths, a stage we've already discussed and designated as the blue quasar. This theory is supported by observations made with space telescopes, the infrared capabilities of JWST allow astronomers to penetrate through the dust and obtain detailed images and data revealing the dynamics of this explosive phase. In particular, these observations reveal the interaction between the quasar's jets and the surrounding matter, which is consistent with the process of expelling dust and gas from the galactic nucleus. These findings are in good agreement with the predictions of the explosion phase theory and convincingly prove that red quasars are indeed in a transition state. Well, now as an example, let's go to the news itself. Not once, and here it is again, the James Webb Telescope has once again opened a new chapter in our understanding of the cosmos. Among its many discoveries, the case of the galaxy ESO 428 G14 stands out. Located about 70 million light years away, it's an active galactic nucleus, or AGN, a region where the supermassive black hole at its center has a profound effect on the surrounding space. ESO 428 G14 is not just any galaxy. Its AGN is a source of intense radiation spanning the entire electromagnetic spectrum thanks to a supermassive black hole devouring matter at an extraordinary rate. This phenomenon generates enormous energy, making AGN one of the most luminous objects in the universe. But what has captivated astronomers in the recent discovery of shock features in the swirling clouds of dust and gas surrounding this black hole an unexpected twist that's challenging our understanding of how these cosmic giants interact with their surroundings. The prevailing theory assumed that the energy heating the surrounding dust in the AGN came directly from the supermassive black hole itself. However, the JWST observations revealed something much more intriguing. The energy that heats the dust comes not only from the black hole's intense radiation, but also from violent interactions with jets of gas ejected at near light speed from the black hole's poles. These jets collide with the surrounding matter, creating what astronomers now call shocks. These impactors have been a revelation. Previously, scientists had argued about how AGNs transfer energy to their surroundings. The discovery that radio jets can do so much damage to nearby dust and gas was unexpected. This discovery challenges long-standing assumptions and opens new questions about the dynamics of supermassive black holes. The implications of these discoveries are profound. By detecting the interaction between radio jets and the surrounding matter, JWST has provided a clearer picture of how supermassive black holes affect not only their immediate surroundings, but the entire galaxy. These jets, previously thought to be mere byproducts of black hole activity, now seem to play a crucial role in shaping their surroundings, affecting the star formation rate and the overall structure of the galaxy. Thus, this phase is a crucial element in the complex interaction between supermassive black holes and their host galaxies. To better understand the impact of active galactic nuclei on the surrounding space, Let's study feedback mechanisms that govern the interaction between supermassive black holes and their cosmic neighbors.
It's long been known that at the center of many galaxies is a supermassive black hole surrounded by a dynamic and turbulent environment known as an active galactic nucleus, also an AGN. The AGN is a region of intense radiation and powerful energy flows driven by an accretion disk, a swirling, chaotic structure of gas and dust that feeds the black hole. This disk, heated to millions of degrees under the action of enormous gravitational forces, emits radiation across the entire electromagnetic spectrum, from X-rays to radio waves. The accretion disk is not a homogeneous structure. It has distinct regions that behave differently depending on their proximity to the black hole. In the inner regions, matter swirls inward at incredible speeds, generating enormous amounts of heat and emitting high-energy radiation. However, recent observations have provided new insights into the outer edges of these disks. For the first time, astronomers have observed the outer edge of an accretion disk, providing a clearer picture of its size and structure. Using the James Webb Space Telescope and Gemini near-infrared spectrograph, researchers have detected emission lines in the near-infrared spectrum from the distant quasar 3Z002. These lines, extended by the Doppler effect, show the size of the accretion disk confirming its vastness and the turbulent conditions within it. The study suggests that these emission lines occur when atoms in the disk absorb energy and go into an excited state, eventually returning to a lower energy state and emitting light. The unique double peak profile of these lines caused by the rotation of the disk allowed astronomers to measure the size of the disk and gave insight into the behavior of matter under the influence of a supermassive black hole. But the accretion disk is not the only actor in the AGN theater. From the poles of the accretion disk fly out radio jets, streams of charged particles accelerated to near light speed by the black hole's magnetic fields. These jets are not just byproducts, they're powerful forces shaping the environment around the AGN. Colliding with the surrounding dust and gas, they create the very shock waves that can affect the evolution of the entire galaxy. The interaction of these jets with the interstellar medium can trigger star formation in some regions and suppress it in others. This feedback mechanism known as AGN feedback plays a critical role in regulating galaxy growth. By enriching the surrounding gas with heavy elements or blowing it out, these jets can dictate the rate of galaxy growth, effectively controlling the balance between star birth and star death. In addition to jets, black holes exert their influence through tidal disruption events or TDEs when a star gets too close to a black hole and is torn apart by its gravitational forces. This process, often called spaghettification, causes the star to stretch out and shred with some of the material falling into the black hole and the rest being ejected into space. Recent research has confirmed that not all stellar material is absorbed by the black hole. Instead, much of it flies away, forming a huge spherical cloud of gas that can obscure high energy radiation, such as X-rays. This cloud, detected thanks to polarized light, provides a glimpse into the consequences of a TDE when a black hole's appetite leaves a visible mark on its surroundings. But this dust is not just small particles floating in a vacuum. It plays an important role in shaping our understanding of the universe and contains key information about the processes that govern the cosmos. Cosmic dust, often thought of as simple space debris, plays an important role in the complex processes of the universe. Cosmic dust is formed mainly from the remnants of stars and consists of tiny micron-sized particles comparable in scale to the width of a human hair and composed of elements like carbon, silicon, and metals. These particles are produced not only by the phenomena discussed earlier, but also by various stellar events like supernova explosions, when dying stars eject their outer layers into space, or by the gentle shredding of matter by red giants late in their lives. 
The formation of cosmic dust is evidence of the life cycles of stars. In the case of supernovae, the intense explosion scatters heavy elements throughout space, which eventually cool and condense into dust grains. Similarly, red giants, as they expand and lose their outer layers, contribute to cosmic dust by slowly ejecting material into the interstellar medium. And this dust can subsequently be incorporated into new stars, planets, and even life, making it a critical component of cosmic recycling. But cosmic dust is not just a byproduct of stellar evolution. It has a profound effect on our observations of the universe. One of the most serious problems created by dust is its ability to obscure our view of celestial objects. Dust particles can scatter and absorb light, especially in the visible spectrum, which makes it difficult to see through dense clouds in areas such as the centers of galaxies or around active galactic nuclei. Such obscuration is particularly problematic when studying black holes and quasars, when the presence of dust can hide the most interesting features. However, as we already mentioned, JWST, with its advanced infrared capability, allows us to penetrate through that visible range of the spectrum. By observing in the infrared, JWST can detect heat emitted by the dust particles themselves, as well as light from objects hidden behind or within the cloud. As we continue to unlock the mysteries of space, the future's even more promising with the upcoming Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope. It launches in 2027 and will complement JWST by offering a wider panoramic view of the universe, capturing infrared images 200 times larger than Hubble, but with the same level of detail. The Roman's wide field of view will allow it to collect an unprecedented amount of data, providing insights into billions of galaxies and helping to create a 3D model of the universe. This telescope will not only expand our understanding of cosmic dust and its role in the formation of galaxies, but also possibly answer some of the biggest questions in astrophysics, such as the nature of dark energy and the structure of the universe on the largest scales. Whether mapping the expansion of the universe or discovering new exoplanets, the future of space exploration holds endless possibilities. Thanks to revolutionary technologies, we're already on the verge of unlocking secrets that will change the way we think about the cosmos forever. Stay curious and look up because the universe is full of mysteries waiting to be explored. At some point of our lives, we have probably all wondered if we are alone in the universe. It would seem that in our own or in other distant galaxies, there are so many planets that revolve around numerous stars. So why have we still not encountered any traces of extraterrestrial life? But what if advanced alien life forms have been around for a long time and they're simply hiding? According to the dark forest hypothesis, technologically advanced civilizations outside of the solar system may already be thriving. However, they have no intention of making contact because they are either cautious of potential attacks from other civilizations, or they may be indeed preparing to attack. Today, you'll learn about the dark forest theory and why you should probably be afraid of being heard by someone in the vast cosmos. One, the dark forest hypothesis, the author and original source. The author of The Dark Forest Hypothesis, DFH, is science fiction writer Lu Sashin. It's worth noting that this is not a scientific theory, and it's not based on any concrete evidence. In 2008, Lu Sashin published his successful fiction novel titled The Dark Forest. The Dark Forest theory was first outlined in this book. The gist of the theory is that every civilization on a cosmic scale seeks to obtain the resources necessary for its continued survival. Therefore, any extraterrestrial life hides in order to not be destroyed by another civilization. And also, 
in order to be able to attack and ensure its own survival. So why is this theory called the Dark Forest Hypothesis? In his novel, Lu Sushin compares this to precarious coexistence to a forest inhabited only by hunters. The author paints civilizations as metaphorical armed shooters in a dark forest, who silently move forward, afraid of being discovered by fellow hunters. If one hunter manages to find another, it's in their best interest to attack first before the enemy does the same. Based on this, we can name several ideas that are promoted by DFH. First one is that hypothetically, alien civilizations exist, but they are in hiding due to the risk of being attacked by others and losing acquired resources, such as inhabited planets. Within the construct of the dark forest hypothesis, survival as the basis of every civilization is known as the chain of suspicion. This phenomenon is caused by insufficient communication, which leads to mistrust as a direct result. The second idea is that a civilization that gives away its location by actively transmitting, say, radio signals, could be captured or destroyed by others for resources. The third concept is that fellowship in this type of system is exceedingly rare, since every civilization strives above all to survive through expansion. However, a treaty is possible if the terms are beneficial to both civilizations. Lu Sashin represents the universe as a battlefield for limited resources, where an alliance is practically impossible. Finally, it's important to note that in Lu Sashin's hypothesis, these hunters are analogous to civilizations with a high level of technological advancement. Therefore, if any civilization is not sufficiently developed to announce itself in space, it will either go unnoticed or it may become easy prey. Two. DFH is an answer to the Fear Me Paradox. As you may already know, in 1950, famous physicist Enrico Fermi, when discussing the phenomenon of flying saucers with his colleagues, unexpectedly asked, where is everyone? Referring to examples of extraterrestrial life, which marked the beginning of the famous Fear Me Paradox. We discussed it in detail in this video on our channel. Fermi assumed that if our galaxy formed several million years before the birth of mankind, then it is possible that other civilizations could have emerged during this period, much older than Earthlings. Therefore, the Milky Way galaxy should be full of civilizations, which could pick up our signals due to their much more advanced technological development, as well as travel through the galaxy. However, so far we have not seen any traces of alien activity, why haven't they visited Earth yet or come close to our planet? To determine the potential number of extraterrestrial civilizations that exist within our galaxy, the famous Drake Equation was derived in 1961. However, we cannot use it to learn why alien creatures have not left any signs of their life. Therefore, at the moment, the Fermi Paradox only has theoretical explanations. Additionally, according to physics professor Adam Frank, the probability that Earthlings are the only civilization in the universe is very small. One in 10 billion trillion, which is to say one times 10 to the 22nd. The professor suggests that our evolution was not unique and other civilizations could potentially have existed before us or even much longer before us. There are more than 70 hypothetical solutions to this issue, one of which is the Dark Forest Hypothesis. Of course, we cannot check the veracity of DFH due to our current technological limitations. However, Lu Sushin's theory provides a logical explanation as to why we still haven't picked up a single alien signal or found any clear signs of life on other planets. It's simply dangerous for other civilizations to betray their location for fear of invasion. Although this hypothesis presents very clearly defined ideas, the DFA still has some inaccuracies. For example, if other civilizations exist, 
then they must differ from ours when it comes to the level of development due to different periods of origin, as Fermi pointed out. This means that there may be civilizations of our technological level or higher that actively search for alien life or study their own systems just like us, because they don't see it as a threat. Therefore, we may not be the only ones sending signals out there, because civilizations do not necessarily develop in fear of detection if they have not experienced confrontation. Three, more about the assumptions of dark forest hypothesis. The idea of capturing other territories and the possible destruction of the first civilization on a cosmic scale is reminiscent of our historical experience on Earth, namely colonization and wars. There are a lot of reasons why people conquer and establish power over other nations. However, in most cases, such as during the colonization of Africa by the Europeans in the 19th century, the main motivation were land and natural resources. The rapid industrial development in Europe required more resources, which were abundant on another continent. Therefore, the colonization of Africa contributed to the development of European countries, but the African land and its population suffered from this expansion. The DFH offers the same colonial model as the reason why one civilization would attack another. We're still pursuing the goal of expansion for the continued survival of mankind, studying exoplanets and other star systems, and planning the colonization of Mars. The red planet is also rich in natural resources that are needed for technological development. Therefore, if we assume that another civilization pursues the same goals, we may have to fight for lands that could serve humanity. Otherwise, our survival would be under threat because according to this hypothesis, survival and the necessary resources are crucial for the preservation of the species. In addition to the need to replenish a limited resource, there are other reasons for the aggressive behavior by civilizations. For example, as we've already said, the DFH introduces a concept known as the chain of suspicion. This concept is closely related to another aspect of this hypothesis, which is known as the technological explosion. The gist of the chain of suspicion is that it's impossible for civilizations to know whether others are benevolent or hostile. These doubts can lead to preemptive attacks and self-defense. According to the researcher Chow Yu, this chain can only emerge between civilizations with the same level of technological development, since they can likely objectively assess their own and other people's capabilities. Thus, if there is a significant gap in their respective levels of development, the chain cannot be formed. The technological explosion describes the ability of cosmic civilizations to make rapid scientific and technological leaps. A strong new hunter can pose a threat to others because advanced civilizations can start to be wary of it or seek to destroy it. However, Chow Yu points out that any invasion attempt could also harm the attacker as other civilizations with similar or higher levels of advancement would be able to detect it, which would contribute to the chain of suspicion. However, in spite of the clear advantage in attacking other civilizations and in stealth, the DFH considers another scenario, benevolence. The point of benevolence is to refuse to attack other civilizations, even if they are detected and they will probably be able to respond to the signal. In a dark forest, this tactic is very dangerous because it is again reinforced by the chain of suspicion. Found by a benevolent civilization, another civilization may turn out to be aggressive or rapidly developing. Therefore, in the future, it will be able to destroy others and survive, having collected enough resources, whereas the benevolent civilization will most likely cease to exist. If we assume that extraterrestrial life really exists and it is way more advanced than us, then it might attack us, since this is a survival tactic with the highest chance of success. This is not the best news. 
So then are there other ways for the events to unfold that are beneficial for Earth based on the dark forest hypothesis besides an attack on our planet? Let's look at this in terms of game theory. Number four, game theory and DFH. The point of game theory is to learn how people make decisions based on certain conditions in order to achieve the best result. So let's imagine Earth as civilization A and a more advanced alien life as civilization B. Let's assume that B has picked up on our radio signal. Now B has three strategies for action. Attack, remain unnoticed but become suspicious, or respond with a prospect of possible friendship. Attack will be considered the most advantageous strategy, even if A is able to fight back. On the other hand, this scenario might turn out to be a losing one for B if A, according to researcher Alina Su, can send a signal in order to transmit the coordinates of the planet of Civilization B to other civilizations. Perhaps in this case, the best option would be to remain unnoticed. If both civilizations don't do anything, neither will benefit. On the one hand, this will save A and B from danger, but on the other hand, they won't be able to obtain the necessary resources. There's also an option to make friends. If both civilizations agree to an alliance, then one of them will benefit, for example, from the ability to use alien technology. The other civilization, the one that proposed friendship, would also be able to benefit, albeit slightly less. Does that mean that an alliance is the best scenario for both civilizations? Possibly, but it comes with some caveats. Firstly, benevolence, as you already know, is very dangerous because, hypothetically, extraterrestrial civilizations are unlikely to be friendly too often. Secondly, the potential amount of resources that would be obtained, even if a trade deal is established, is less than what you would gain with a forced takeover. And so the theoretical attack on Earth has the highest probability, but this course of events can greatly harm the attacker. Still other civilizations may be afraid of the unknown military potential of Earth and therefore choose the tactics of secrecy or friendship. Five, the danger of sending signals into space. Does it mean that if the probability of Earth being conquered is higher than any other option, should we be wary of the propagation of our signal into space? According to DFH, messages to other civilizations could threaten our security. The same opinion is shared by many astrophysicists, including Stephen Hawking. After a breakthrough in space research in the middle of the last century, there was plenty of interest from scientists in the search for alien civilizations. In 1974, the famous Arecibo message was sent to a star cluster 21,000 light years away. Since that time, several radio messages have been launched into space, the latest of which dates back to 2017. Physicist Stephen Hawking believed that these messages could lead to the scenario described in the dark forest. According to him, an alien civilization visiting Earth could have the same consequences for us as the effects colonization of America had on its native inhabitants in the 15th century. Therefore, he expressed an opinion that this type of communication must be stopped. Nonetheless, other scientists, including SETI astrobiologist Douglas Bacoch, believe that the fear of sending messages can lead to Earth's isolationism. Moreover, Vakoch pointed out that the alien civilizations have had a chance to attack our planet while it was just developing, so you should not be afraid of the possibility of being heard by extraterrestrial life. Finally, the dark forest hypothesis also promotes the idea of differences in hunters' behavior. That is, not all alien civilizations would definitely attack us if they detected our signal. Additionally, a group of independent researchers led by the Global Catastrophic Risk Institute, Seth Baum, suggested that in addition to potentially dangerous civilizations, those with a lesser potential to harm us 
may also exist. They believe that there might be neutral civilizations that prefer to hide and not make contact, as well as civilizations that could establish a friendly relationship with Earth and help us solve global problems. In conclusion, the dark forest hypothesis is not the sole answer to the burning question, where is everyone? There are many other suggestions that attempt to explain the lack of a hint of extraterrestrial life, such as too great of a distance between civilizations, or the low likelihood of the emergence of other living organisms. Nevertheless, we cannot rule out the possibility of the veracity of Lu Shoshin's theory, but we cannot confirm it either. Approximately 13.8 billion years ago, a singularity, an entity of infinite density and gravity arose that quickly swelled and cooled, giving birth to our universe. This event is known to us as the Big Bang. However, speculation about such things does not provide answers, but only generates more and more questions. What was there before the Big Bang? Is there even a before in the universe where time itself was born out of this primordial explosion? Are we the last chapter in an endless cycle of cosmic death and rebirth? The greatest minds of our species have proposed theories, each as mind-boggling as the next. Some speak of other universes while others postulate a universe that breathes, collapses, and expands in an infinite cycle. Let's try to make sense of what actually happened before the beginning of time itself. Imagine a universe that breathes. It expands outward from one point, grows for billions of years, and then shrinks, drawing in all matter and energy. This is the essence of the oscillating universe theory. This model assumes that our universe is just one phase in an endless cycle of expansion and contraction, a cosmic dance that has neither beginning nor end. Each cycle begins with the Big Bang, an explosive moment of creation followed by a long period of expansion. Over billions of years, this expansion slows, stops, and then reverses. The universe begins to contract, which eventually leads to the Big Crunch. During the Big Bang, galaxies collide, stars are compressed, and all matter and energy is squeezed into a singular point of infinite density, very similar to the singularity from which the Big Bang occurred. But this is not the end, but the beginning of another cycle. The singularity explodes with another Big Bang, starting the next iteration of the universe. The lifetime of each universe in this model could be billions, even trillions of years, and each Big Bang prepares the ground for the next Big Bang. It's a fascinating concept, isn't it? Like a cosmic pendulum swinging back and forth between expansion and contraction, destroying and recreating universes in its path. However, the theory of an oscillating universe is not without flaws and criticisms. We've yet to understand many factors concerning the expansion of the universe, its exact energy composition, and how gravity behaves on such scales. And the data we've collected from the cosmic microwave background seems to point to an ever-accelerating expansion, not a possible future contraction. But as always, Science continues to evolve and once rejected theories might find new life in the light of new discoveries. Throughout our exploration of space and time, we've always thought of our universe as unique, a single bubble of reality floating in an endless sea of nothingness. But what if we are not alone? What if our universe is just one of an unimaginable multitude of other universes, each with its own laws of physics, its own history, 
its own beginning and end. This is the premise of the multiverse theory. Imagine a vast cosmic ocean in which countless bubbles appear and disappear. Each of these bubbles represents an independent universe, and our universe is just one of them among this cosmic foam. Some of these universes may be different from ours, have different physical constants or even other dimensions. Others may be strikingly similar and may even contain life as we know it. What if some of these universes preceded ours? Could our Big Bang have been caused by an interaction with another universe? The multiverse concept challenges our understanding of our place in the cosmos. Nevertheless, it is a theory that remains highly speculative. While the multiverse theory is fascinating, it is also controversial. After all, if these other universes are beyond our reach, how can we detect or study them? And if the theory cannot be tested, can it be considered scientific? Nevertheless, multiverse theory continues to be the subject of research and debate among physicists. It represents the edge of our understanding, where science mixes with philosophy and observable facts give way to profound questions about the nature of reality itself. And yet, despite the supposed multiplicity of universes with all their variety of physical forces and dimensions, let us return to the realities of ours. Our understanding of the universe rests on two pillars of modern physics. Quantum mechanics, which describes a world on the atomic and subatomic scale and general relativity, which describes a world of very large dimensions. But what happens? when these two worlds collide. According to Einstein's general theory of relativity, space and time are interwoven into four-dimensional fabrics known as space-time. Massive objects distort this fabric, creating what we perceive as gravity. On the other hand, quantum mechanics presents a world in which particles can exist in several states simultaneously, appear and disappear. It is a world that challenges our everyday logic. These two theories meet in the singularity of the Big Bang and in the heart of black holes where the scales of quantum mechanics and gravity intersect. Scientists have long sought a theory of quantum gravity to reconcile these two conflicting views. One exciting idea that emerged from this search is the no boundary proposal, championed by physicists Stephen Hawking and James Hartle. According to this theory, the universe did not emerge from a singularity. Instead, space and time are finite, but limitless, like the surface of the Earth. Just as you can travel the Earth without falling off the edge, you can travel the universe without colliding with a boundary. The universe would be a four-dimensional sphere, and the Big Bang would be a smooth point similar to Earth's North Pole, but not a singularity. In this model, asking what happened before the Big Bang becomes as meaningless as asking what is north of the North Pole. This is a pretty good way to get around the singularity problem at the beginning of the universe. Like the other theories we've discussed, the No Boundaries proposal is not without criticism and is still the subject of ongoing research. Nevertheless, it represents an intriguing attempt to bring together worlds incredibly large and incredibly small pushing the boundaries of our understanding of the origin of the universe. Now let's look into the field of string theory, a theoretical framework in which the fundamental building blocks of the universe are not particles but one-dimensional entities called strings. Each string can vibrate at different frequencies, and these different vibrations produce different particles. Electrons, quarks, photons, all of them can be strings just singing on different notes. But string theory doesn't stop there. It also predicts the existence of more than three spatial dimensions with which we are familiar. These additional dimensions may be compacted or hidden from our perception, but nevertheless fundamentally affect the fabric of reality. 
In the context of our topic, one variant of the string theory, the pre-Big Bang scenario, or as it's also called, the ekpyrotic model, suggests that our universe may have been created by the catastrophic collision of two multiverse worlds or brains. What happens after such a collision? The two brains bounce off and apart only to come together gravitationally and collide again billions of years later, perhaps creating another universe. So what was there before the Big Bang? Well, in this model, it could have been another universe similar to ours existing on a brain parallel to ours. And yet, string theory itself, although incredibly elegant and capable of combining quantum mechanics and gravity, has no empirical evidence. And as we already know, such things are very difficult to verify. But what if we choose a different approach? Instead of looking for a universe that preceded ours, what if we reconsider the very notion of nothingness? When we think of a vacuum, we often imagine absolute nothingness. But in the world of quantum mechanics, the vacuum is far from empty. This is a bubbling soup of particles and antiparticles that spontaneously arise and then destroy each other. This phenomenon is called vacuum fluctuations. The vacuum fluctuation model, also known as the quantum fluctuation model, suggests that our universe may have originated from one of these vacuum fluctuations. A tiny bubble of false vacuum could have inflated into the universe due to the principles of quantum mechanics. Such a bubble, due to phase transition or quantum tunneling, would begin to expand rapidly, and its edges would be pushed outward by negative pressure. Inside this bubble, false vacuum energy could be transformed into matter, giving rise to stars, galaxies, and eventually, you and I. So, what was there before the Big Bang? In the vacuum fluctuation model, it could have been a quantum vacuum, a sea of short-lived particles and antiparticles, and our universe was just one random bubble that managed to grow into something bigger. Now, while the vacuum fluctuation model is an exciting possibility, it also raises difficult questions. For example, why did this particular bubble expand while others did not? How do we reconcile the idea of an eternal quantum vacuum with the apparent age of our universe? But as we delve deeper into the world of quantum physics, we find that it holds more intriguing possibilities. One of these possibilities is related to the field of research that combines quantum mechanics with cosmology. That brings us to the next model, the Big Bounce Theory. Imagine a universe that expands contracts, then bounces back elastically. That's the basic idea of the Big Bounce Theory. Instead of a singularity in which all the laws of physics cease to exist, the Big Bounce Theory argues that our universe may have been born from the remnants of an earlier contracting universe. In this model, the universe is not compressed into singularity. Instead, because of quantum effects, it returns to a very small size and begins to expand again leading to what we now call the Big Bang. This theory, like the oscillating universe theory, postulates a universe with no beginning and no end, but with an infinite cycle of expansion, contraction, and rebirth. In this way, it circumvents the singularities that plague the other models. However, unlike the oscillating universe theory, the Big Bounce focuses specifically on the transition point, the bounce between contraction and expansion. So how does quantum mechanics fit into this? Quantum effects are thought to play a significant role on the very small scales at which rebound can occur. According to quantum mechanics, particles can tunnel through barriers even if they have no classical energy to do so. Some theories suggest that the universe could use a similar quantum tunneling effect to bounce from a contracting state to an expanding one. Again, this theory is highly speculative and faces significant problems, both theoretical and observational. Can we find evidence for a previous phase of contraction in our present universe? 
Can we develop a quantum theory of gravity that can handle these extreme conditions? However, the Big Bounce theory is not without its flaws. The physics of what can make the shrinking universe come back to normal is still being investigated. Understanding how this process can occur without violating the known laws of physics is the main obstacle to this theory. The Big Bounce theory does not yet fit within our traditional notions of time and causality. However, as always in science, there are competing theories. For example, our universe could have been born from a cosmic object that we have already discovered but barely understand. Something mysterious, all-consuming, but perhaps also creative. A black hole? Black holes, mysterious giants of the universe formed by the collapse of massive stars. They are regions of space where gravity is so strong that nothing, not even light, can leave it. The base of a black hole, according to the general theory of relativity, is a singularity, a point where density becomes infinite and the curvature of space-time reaches an extreme degree. But what if these cosmic entities are not the end, but rather the beginning? Some physicists speculate that singularities inside black holes could give rise to new expanding universes. Thus, our universe could be the inner part of a black hole belonging to another parent universe. In this model, the Big Bang would correspond to the formation of a black hole singularity in the parent universe, and the expansion of our universe corresponds to the internal growth of the black hole. So what was there before the Big Bang? It could be the inside of a black hole in another universe and maybe every black hole in our universe can give birth to a new universe inside itself. Of course, this idea, like all those we've discussed, is a hypothesis and not without problems. How can we test this theory? Can we observe the effects of the parent universe? And how do we reconcile this with our current understanding of black holes and singularities? Loop quantum gravity, or LQG, is a theoretical framework aimed at reconciling the two giants of 20th century physics. Quantum mechanics, which describes the very small, and general relativity, which describes the very large. Loop quantum gravity implies that space itself is not continuous, but consists of tiny, discrete loops. It consists of tiny, indivisible loops, just as a piece of fabric consists of interwoven threads. Applied to cosmology, loop quantum gravity, or more exactly, loop quantum cosmology, offers a rebound scenario similar to the big bounce which we discussed earlier. In fact, loop quantum cosmology provides a specific quantum mechanical description of the universe's evolution, including the big bounce scenario. Instead of collapsing into a singularity as required by traditional Big Bang theory and general theory of relativity, the universe shrinks to a minimum size, but quantum gravitational effects become significant and counteract the contraction. Then the universe bounces back and begins to expand again. This means that our universe may have undergone a series of expansions and contractions, each of which began with a quantum jump. So, what was there before the Big Bang? From the point of view of loop quantum cosmology, it may be another phase of the universe, the contraction phase, which preceded the quantum jump. In loop quantum cosmology, the idea of a quantum bridge is truly fascinating. This bridge represents a transitional phase connecting our universe with its predecessor. Instead of singularity, the universe undergoes a quantum leap and starts expanding this jump, this transformation from contraction to expansion, can be seen as a quantum bridge from the old universe to the new one. This quantum bridge is not a physical bridge in the conventional sense, but a phase of the evolution of the universe controlled by quantum gravity. So what is beyond the Big Bang? According to loop quantum cosmology, the previous universe is connected to ours by a quantum bridge. Although this theory eliminates the singularity at the Big Bang and offers an elegant quantum description of the evolution of the universe, 
it still faces considerable difficulties. Nevertheless, if it is correct, it offers us an amazing picture. A universe with no beginning and no end, experiencing infinite cycles of contraction, jumping, and expansion. Although these theories offer intriguing possibilities, for the most part, they are still in the realm of speculation. Each has its strengths, its weaknesses, and none of them yet has conclusive experimental evidence in its favor. Even as we approach the answer to what was before the Big Bang, we should expect that each answer will open up even more questions. But the beauty of science lies in the process of exploration and discovery itself. Researchers around the world tirelessly study these theories and improve their models. And the study of even one theory goes a long way towards advancing the whole picture. So, what happened before the Big Bang? In a nutshell, at this point, we don't know for sure. But whatever the answer, the search itself enriches our understanding and inspires us to keep looking. In the vast expanse of space among countless stars and galaxies, there is a whisper, the whisper of a distant star that's traveled light years to reach us here on Earth. This is not a science fiction tale, but a reality of our universe a testament to the continual growth of our understanding of the cosmos. Scientists eavesdropping on space have detected a signal, a radio wave from a star system not so different from our own. A star known as YZ SETI is located just 12 light years away. But it's not just any signal. This signal carries a potential signature of a magnetic field very similar to the one that protects our own planet. The magnetic field that may envelop a rocky Earth-sized exoplanet orbiting YZ SETI. What could it mean? Could this distant world be more like our own than we've ever imagined? And what could it tell us about the search for life beyond our solar system? Let's go light years across to delve into the mysteries of radio signals in space and explore the magnetic fields of distant worlds. In the boundless silence of space, radio signals can, without guile, be called whispers. But what are these signals, and how do they propagate over such vast distances in space? Radio signals are a type of electromagnetic radiation, just like light, x-rays, or microwaves. They're generated by a variety of sources, from stars and galaxies to artificial satellites and spacecraft. These signals travel at the speed of light carrying information across vast distances in space. They can tell us about the composition of stars, the presence of planets, and even the origin of the universe itself. But how do we detect these signals? The answer lies in the technology of radio astronomy. Radio telescopes, such as the Very Large Array in New Mexico, or the now defunct Arecibo University in Puerto Rico are designed to detect and analyze radio signals from space. They are our ears to the cosmos, listening to the faint whispers of the universe. Once a signal is detected by a radio observatory, it is analyzed using sophisticated algorithms and computer models. These analyses can provide extensive information about the source of the signal from its location and distance to its physical properties. But radio signals from space are not just a scientific curiosity. They also have practical applications. For example, radio signals from satellites are used for GPS navigation, weather forecasting, and Earth observation. They are an integral part of our modern technological infrastructure. So, the next time you look up at the night sky, remember, there's a whole symphony of signals playing out there, a cosmic conversation, an orchestra that we're just beginning to understand. Let us return to the constellation of Cetus, the sea monster, in which lies a star that whispers to us across light years. 
Her name is YZ Seti. YZ Seti is a red dwarf smaller and cooler than our sun. It is located 12 light years away, a close neighbor on a cosmic scale. But what makes YZ Seti truly fascinating is not the star itself, but what revolves around it. At least three exoplanets are known to orbit around YZ Seti, the innermost of which, YZ Seti b, is of particular interest. YZ Seti b is a rocky, Earth-sized exoplanet that orbits very close to its parent star. In fact, it is so close that its year, the time it takes to make one revolution around YZ Seti, is only 1.6 Earth days. Recently, using Very Large Array, scientist at Bucknell University, Professor Jackie Villadson, and her colleague, J. Sebastian Panita, detected a repeating radio signal coming from YZ Seti. The signal was recorded at a frequency of 2 to 4 gigahertz. It appears to be modulated by the rotation of the star and the orbit of YZ Seti b, indicating an interaction between the star and the magnetic field of the planet. This discovery could have major implications for our understanding of exoplanets and their magnetic fields. Although YZ Seti b is unlikely to be teeming with life due to its close proximity to its star, the detection of its magnetic field is important because it provides a method for discovering more life-friendly worlds in the future. But what does this signal really mean? And why are magnetic fields so important in our search for life? To answer these questions, we need to look deeper into the invisible force fields that shape our universe. Magnetic fields are a fundamental force of nature. They guide the hand of the compass, help birds navigate their long migration, and protect our planet from the harsh solar wind. But magnetic fields are not just an earthly phenomenon. They also play an important role beyond the Earth. Our sun, for example, has a complex and dynamic magnetic field. It controls the sun's activity from the formation of sunspots to the eruption of solar flares. Magnetic fields also shape the structure of galaxies, directing the movement of interstellar gas and influencing the formation of new stars. But perhaps the most intriguing role of magnetic fields in space is their potential impact on planetary habitability. A strong magnetic field can protect a planet from harmful radiation from its star, helping to maintain a stable atmosphere, and perhaps even conditions suitable for life. That's why it's so interesting to detect a potential magnetic field on exoplanet YZ Seti b. This could provide valuable information about the planet's atmosphere and its potential to support life. How do magnetic fields affect the detection and interpretation of signals from space? To understand this, we need to delve a little deeper into the nature of radio signals and magnetic fields. Radio signals are a type of electromagnetic wave, which means they are composed of oscillating electric and magnetic fields. These fields can interact with other magnetic fields they encounter as they travel through space. When a radio signal passes through a magnetic field, it can be altered in various ways. Its direction can be changed, a phenomenon known as deflection. Its polarization, or the orientation of its electric field, can be rotated. Its frequency, in other words, the number of waves passing through a point in a given time, can be shifted. These changes can provide valuable information about the magnetic field that caused them. By studying these changes, scientists can infer properties of the magnetic field such as its strength and orientation. But magnetic fields can also pose problems for detecting signals from space. They can cause interference, making it difficult to detect the signal. They can distort the signal, making it difficult to interpret. This is why the study of magnetic fields is so important in the field of radio astronomy. By understanding how magnetic fields affect radio signals, 
Scientists can develop methods to correct these effects and extract valuable information hidden in signals from space. To better understand the influence of magnetic fields in creating favorable conditions for life on the planet, let's turn our gaze closer to home, to a familiar red-headed neighbor in our cosmic backyard. Mars, the red planet, has long captured our imagination. With its towering volcanoes, deep canyons, and hints of liquid water, it is one of the most intriguing places in our solar system. But Mars also presents us with a mystery. Unlike Earth, Mars has a very weak and inhomogeneous magnetic field. This has serious implications for the planet's atmosphere and its ability to support life. Mars' magnetic field is not created by a dynamo in its core like Earth's. Instead, it's the remnants of magnetism trapped in the planet's crust from the time when Mars actually had a global magnetic field. Without a strong magnetic field protecting it, Mars's atmosphere is directly exposed to the solar wind, a stream of charged particles emitted by the sun. Moreover, new models presented by R. Sakata of the University of Tokyo and others suggest that a weak magnetic field like Mars after its dynamo is turned off could actually lead to a more rapid loss of atmosphere than if there were no magnetic field at all. Modeling has shown that a weak magnetic field results in the fastest rate of atmospheric ion loss, six times faster than without a magnetic field. The reason is that the weak magnetic field strength lines were easily repelled by the solar wind, creating a path for ions to escape into space over the night side of Mars. This suggests that Mars' remaining magnetic field may have hastened the planet's transformation into the cold and barren world it is today. Over billions of years, this caused Mars to lose much of its atmosphere, a process known as atmospheric stripping this turned Mars from a potentially warm and wet world in its early history into the cold and dry planet we see today. The case of Mars provides a vivid illustration of the importance of magnetic fields to a planet's habitability. It shows us that without a strong magnetic field, a planet, even one as Earth-like as Mars, can lose the things that make it habitable, atmosphere and water. By the way, we've already looked at the problems and potential solutions to make Mars a second home for humanity in a separate video. Exoplanets, planets orbiting stars outside our solar system, have recently become a major focus of astronomical research. With more than a thousand discovered to date, they offer a wealth of opportunities to learn about the diversity of the planetary systems in our galaxy. One of the most exciting developments in this field was the discovery of the first known magnetic field on an exoplanet in late December 2021 by an international team of astronomers who used the Hubble Space Telescope for their research. It was discovered on a Neptune-sized planet called HAT-P-11b. HAT-P-11b HAT is located about 123 light years away in the constellation of Swan. It is a hot Neptune, a type of exoplanet that's similar in size to Neptune, but much closer to its star, resulting in high temperatures on the planet's surface. The detection of a magnetic field on HAT P11b was a groundbreaking discovery. It showed that exoplanets can generate magnetic fields just like planets in our solar system. As we mentioned earlier, Studying the magnetic fields of exoplanets can provide valuable information about their internal structure, atmospheric properties, and potential habitability. For example, a strong magnetic field can protect a planet's atmosphere from stellar winds, helping to preserve conditions that could support life. That brings us back to YZ Yeti B, an exoplanet from which a signal was recently detected. If this signal is indeed indicative of a magnetic field, it could have a major implication for our understanding of this exoplanet and its potential for life. 
Traveling through space from the familiar landscapes of Mars to the far reaches of a YZ Yeti, we've truly come to realize the invisible power of magnetic fields, the profound effect on planets, and their potential to harbor life on them. The field of studying signals from other galaxies has grown rapidly over the past few years. For example, the giant Metrowave telescope in India has detected a faint signal from the most distant galaxy to date. The signal detected by YZ SETI opened another new window into the universe, reminding us how much we still have to learn about our world. As we look to the future, the study of signals from other galaxies will continue to be the focus of space research. Each signal carries the potential for new discoveries. So when we look up at the night sky, let's remember that we're not just looking at stars and galaxies. We're looking at a universe filled with unseen forces, whispered signals, and hidden possibilities. And as we continue to listen and explore, who knows what we might discover next? <laughs>